What is up, fishers and foragers? Welcome to another episode of Fish and Forage. <laughs> so as you might notice, I'm out here again on the pontoon. This is a late fall pontoon adventure. But I wanted to get out here for sure because I actually have a lot of cool stuff to show you guys. So first and foremost, I got this guy. So I'm not moving right now, right? So forward boost and then I can steer for now with the oars but eventually I want to get a seat set up to where I can steer with just turning my seat but what this is is my PWM Mark 1 so I say Mark 1 because this thing's kind of ugly as you can see it's got like a giant braid of wires and the I'll show you the little box in a second here, but it's ugly too. And this is kind of just a proof of concept. So I'm going to probably redo all this and uh, make it a little prettier. But yeah, so that's that's pretty sweet. So I have this little controller up with me and this can turn on the thrust. So now forward or reverse. It's harder to show reverse because it's reverse sucks on these Minn Kotas, but either way I can I can adjust the speed with this dial up front. As an added bonus, it actually draws less power. So the way that norm, the way the Minn Kotas normally use lower speeds is they always draw the same amount of power, but they take away thrust and turn it into heat. Whereas this thing, the PWN, the pulse width modulator, will actually draw less on the battery to achieve those slower speeds. So it should make my battery last longer, which is awesome. This is all waterproof, I think with hot glue, you know, as you can see, it's kind of ugly. I like the, I like this part of it. This is nice, but everything else from here back to the, back to the, uh, the battery is kind of ugly. We'll, um, we'll improve it as we go um, and make it better and make it nicer. I think I, I already have some ideas to, to make it a little better, but for now, we'll, this is basically just a proof of concept. So great that it works. I can forward and eventually I'll be able to turn my seat to adjust, but for now, I just have to kind of pull on the oars, depending on which way I want to go. But yeah, this is going to help a ton with trolling, so I can just basically not have to worry about turning around all the time. I can just sit forward, you know, relax, and troll without worrying about, you know, going the wrong direction or whatnot. So that's going to be great. Aside from this, we got some more. We got some fishing to do. So it's it's late fall, like I mentioned. Um, I'm not a very good bass fisherman in general. And this is definitely not ideal conditions. So it's gonna be even harder for me to catch bass. The water temp is 42 right now. I actually have my fish finder going too. So water temp's 42 Fahrenheit. And when it gets colder, the bass go deeper and they get lethargic. So what I'm gonna do is kind of slow my presentation down. I'm gonna find the deeper parts. So I'm gonna to try to explore around for those. Oh, you know what? Maybe that's interference. Yeah, I think it's interference. Interesting. So if you watch it, I'll turn this on and you'll see it. Boom, all of a sudden, just like a straight line. And then I turn it down, it gets fader. If I turn it up, it's it more and more and more and more. So I think that's electrical interference, which is weird because there's no, no electricity going near the transducer. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so that's something I'll have to think about. Get some like shielded cables or something? I don't know. So looking back here, we have this giant mess. This is the other part of the PWM. It's actually, this is the PWM itself. Basically it connects the battery, the motor, and then the controller all together. And I just have a Tupperware to keep it kind of dry. Um, again, this is Mark 1. I'm gonna make Mark 2. Should be a lot cleaner. Um, but for now, this is just functioning, you know. I'm getting the prototype, getting the kinks ironed out. One of the kinks is going to be figuring out why it's causing interference on the, on the fish finder. Okay, well, for now, let's just slowly meander around and find a deep spot. So 
I've never done this before. I'm, I'm heavily relying on a lot of electronics to try to find where fish might be. And I have two waypoints so far that I'm going to move between. But if I find the deep spots and I find the structure, I should be able to find the fish. And so far, 21 feet is the deepest. That's the most promising. And there was structure there. So I'm thinking that might be the best bet. Right now, I'm essentially just mapping the outside of this lake. And I can save it in this cool, in the Garmin Striker, Striker 4 CV, there's a way to save your map. So next time you come, you get load up the map again. And you essentially have to draw the map yourself. There's no overlay or anything, but it's pretty slick that it saves it. So you can get the depths and basically map out the, map out the lake on your own. It's a pretty cool tool. Okay, so we are at the deep spot. Gonna throw around something that goes on the bottom. Probably a jig, the big old jig. Slow rolled on the bottom, sounds like a plan. Let it hit the bottom. I'm just gonna super slow jig it. Holy crap, it's cold. <laughs> it is so freaking cold. So they've got to be cold down there in the water. Just as much as I'm cold up here. Sweet boo Jesus, it's cold. Catching fish keeps me warm, man. Alrighty guys, I'm gonna call it for today. As you can see, I'm frigid. I have not caught any fish. I didn't even see any fish. A couple other guys were fishing a little bit. They didn't catch any either. I'm happy that the PWM worked. I'm happy that I got the pontoon fully on the water. There's a train coming, so take care. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Boop.